Hey Covalence friends, so it is now time to actually code out our centralized authentication portal. So if you haven't seen the video yet, that was the predecessor to this, uh, you should go check it out. I'll have the playlist linked in the description here. Uh, but basically that's the backend component that is kind of the crux to all of this, where we talk how I can share authentication state between multiple applications and it's pretty integral to um, understanding what we're going to be doing today. So go ahead and make sure you check that out first. But now we uh, get into the fun part. So although this is, you know, I'm going to use a Create React app for this, you can really make it out of any front end you want. You could just make a standard, you know, index.html and app.js and no fancy library needed. As long as you can make network requests, um, that's basically all that's necessary. So really it can be accomplished in, you know, a myriad of different ways, but I will just be using a simple create react app here. So we'll go ahead and get that started. I'm going to call this central auth portal, and I'm actually going to go ahead and use the, uh, TypeScript template. So it's going to go ahead and get everything generated for us. Um, so yeah, with the intent of this is we're going to be creating a client-side login page effectively that communicates to our auth server. And that is going to be able to um, authentic authenticate you know, our user no matter where they come from. And uh, if we can authenticate them successfully, it will be able to grant a token, at which point we can redirect them back to their app that they came from. And uh, the cool part about this is with this centralized authentication backend that we touched upon in the previous video, if you have some user register for service A, and you also have service B available on this um, backend, then they have a valid user account for both services, which is cool. So in case you have a couple small things that, you know, maybe are projects that aren't necessarily related, but, you know, they're small enough to where you're like, ah, let me just sling out, you know, a few new routes and a few new queries for it and, you know, let the rest of my project infrastructure take care of it. You know, great. This this could be a fun little project for you. So and we'll have the source code available for uh, both the back end and for this. I'm just going to make a couple like small dummy sites for like site A and site B to test this out. Um, I might not upload those as separate repos, but I definitely will have this. And so uh, let's go ahead and um, yeah, get coding. I'm also going to install some bootstrap just for some quick and dirty uh, styling. All right, and I'm actually going to get rid of, I don't know why I'm using create react app when generally speaking, I just obliterate all of the uh, predefined components and everything. All right, and we'll import bootstraps CSS. Cool. All right. Well, the intent of this, let's see is to make a centralized auth portal. This this really is just gonna let our users log in at one place. So, you know, we can actually make this look a little nicer. Um, your other projects, you might have like a login button on your nav bar, and really it can just be an external link to this, um, just with some context in the query parameters. And so uh, you can make, you know, one nice looking app here and uh, have that take care of everything. Let's see getting rid of all of my unused imports. Um, we'll go to the index.html here and say central auth portal. We'll go ahead and make a little title of our own. The body, um, I don't really like bootstraps, BG light. It's a little too light for my taste, so I'm gonna make a slightly darker background here. But um, let's see. I like dodo do as a, a hex color for backgrounds. It's just a nice little 
grayish color, but let's get our server up and running and then we'll start making some changes. Um, so what the intent of this um, portal and how we can get people to log in and get redirected is they're not going to go directly to this site. They'll go from, you know, they'll be on site A, they'll have a login button, and then they'll click on that login button, which redirects them over to this uh, with a query parameter of like originator equals, you know, app one dot dev. And so um, the user will come here, we'll have a login, you know, form of some kind, they'll log in, we'll grant a token, and upon granting the token, we'll use this query parameter to redirect the user back there, and we will add the token as a query parameter. And so that way, on each individual application, you know, app A and app B, they can just listen for, um, in like a use effect, a URL parameter of token and then you know store that in local storage or do whatever each child site wants to do with the credentials but um yeah let's go ahead and style this up creating a little container here we'll create an h1 with uh some center aligned text We'll go ahead and we'll create a center aligned uh, row. And then we're gonna put a form in here and uh, we'll make it full width on smaller screens and on medium screens or greater. We'll make it a little more than half width. So we'll say like seven out of 12 units uh, wide. And we'll go ahead and we'll set up our form here. For the form, I'm gonna give the form the class of a, uh, let me check out my zoom over here. I hope that's uh, nice and easy to see. Uh, for the form here, we're gonna give it a light background, you know, bootstrap BG light class. We'll give it some padding and we'll give it a little bit of a drop shadow to make it stand off the page a little bit more. And then the input over here will give the class of form control just so it looks nice. Type here is going to be email. I don't know why I copied that label. I should have left that as is. And I'll get rid of the HTML4 attributes. All right. So I'm just doing kind of a quick mock up of what we, you know, want this form to look like. And it's not terrible so far we can kind of clean it up a little bit more um i like that i created an h1 but also i didn't put any text in there um whoops so let's go do that on some top margin as well so we'll say central auth portal here and then let's see uh, for the form itself, let's give it some rounded corners. It's looking a little bit better. Not the prettiest, but you know, with a couple minutes worth of work, it still doesn't look disgusting. It doesn't look like a Comic Sans vomit, so I guess that's all right. And then at the bottom of our form, let's go ahead and have a submit button. So, mm. 
how does the outline dark button look with this? Too minimalist. Let's get rid of the outline. Let's also add some Y margin to the button as well. Okay, I'm down with that. Very, very neutral tones. Um, so, um, with this mockup in place, we need to start integrating some functionality. So I need some state to control the state of you know these inputs here. And I also need to be able to um, store, you know, how we came to this page. We need to be able to read out the query parameters themselves. So um, we'll want the use effect and use state hooks pulled in. Alright, so we've got our originator state, and let's go ahead and set up our email and password state as well. Let's make some controlled React inputs as well. So, this input value is tied to the email state. And on change, correspondingly, it's going to update that email piece of state. So, all right, and uh, what we can do is I'll copy this from this input, paste it down here, and change which pieces of state that it's uh, tied to and what it updates correspondingly. Just a nice little speed tip. I like to employ. All right. And then finally, let's go ahead and um, get this use effect defined. All right. Now, what we need to do is we need to construct a URL object um, based on our current URL. And I'm not using anything like React Router DOM on this. This truly is like a single view um, application here, just a straight up app.tsx. Um, <clears throat> so I need to create a new URL object from like our window location. And then from there, we can use like URL search params to see uh, what we've got in there. And that can tell us, you know, how we got to this, from which application we got to this page. So uh, let's go ahead and say, this one a lot, location return, location object. Yes. All right, we'll create some URL parameters from our URL object. So new URL search params. I think I can just give it a URL object. No, 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 no. it's the URL dot search property for search params. You know, I can never remember uh, exactly which uh, class contains which properties. We'll find out though, uh, real quick. I think I do have what we need though. Um, I have no query parameters at the moment because, um, you know, I'm just going straight here and actually. I need to uh, get specific parameters. So I think I do have everything set up the right way. Um, let me mock up like a fake, you know, URL to get here, but. Um, so 
what I'm doing is, let's see, currently this app is running on localhost, uh, so at port 3000. So let's say I've got another app at port 3001. Um, that login page is going to direct to this URL, localhost colon 3000, question mark, originator equals, you know, That's kind of the intent. So if my secondary app is at localhost colon 3001, uh, the login link is going to direct to this site with the query param of originator equals, you know, itself. And so uh, this is the URL I'm about to copy and paste here. And that's what we'll go to shortly next. Um, but this should return an array of all matches of that query parameter. And we really should only have one. Um, so I'll array destructure that as originator. Very, you know, very creative and innovative, I know, variable naming wise. And so if we uh, have that originator, we'll go ahead and set originator to that. Although we might not actually need that state, now that I'm thinking about that, uh, we can just kind of keep everything now, because we've we've got some downstream actions, the uh, login that needs that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So right now, uh, with our component dev tools, that's just going to be a blank piece of state. But if I come here via that query param, we uh, should have the original um, page's URL here, which is great because that's how we will redirect after authenticating our user. So uh, what I need to do is now create functionality for our user to uh, log in with. So. So we're gonna give this uh, click event listener to our button and our button does exist in a form. So I actually do want to cancel the default behavior of that button. Uh, but the type of this is gonna be a mouse event on an HTML button element. And we will just tell our code to prevent the default behavior, which is to attempt a form submission, which is not quite what we're doing. We could. Um, I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to do some of our own validation first. So if not email or not password, we'll alert and return to, you know, stop code execution beyond this. And alerts are ugly and terrible, but this is kind of a quick demonstration of what a centralized auth portal could be like. Like I said, you know, you've got one effective, you know, login portal that you have to write and then everything else can just be like a, a link to this page from like your nav bar or something from uh, your other sites, which means you make this look nice, you make this work, you know, in a very fancy manner, and that's that's it. So you personally, you can, you know, make it look as nice as you want, dress it up as best as possible. Me, for this, I'll kind of leave alerts in for the time being. So they're ugly, but I'll keep it here for now. So we will go ahead and give this um, button this click event. And what we would want to do is make a fetch request to our auth server itself. So actually, um, what I want to do is I'm going to launch our auth server. Let's see. Ugh. I just wanted to split my terminal in two, and so I was like, ah, tmux, that's what I need to do, but I also forget the, uh, Control plus 
no, Control Shift Plus, the commands to multiplex. You can also just open a new tab. And <laughs> now I forget how to exit Tmux. Ugh. All right, well, I'll just do a new uh, tab. And, oh, new tab opens it in the same directory. Jeez, okay. That's what I was trying to do earlier, was uh, just open it up. Let's see, kill that tab. I just wanted to open up a tab back in the current directory without having to, like, re-navigate to it. All right, so we're actually running our auth server on uh, localhost colon 3000. And this uh, auth portal is gonna be running on uh, localhost colon 3001. All right, but once we have found out these two pieces of state are defined, we can go ahead and execute our uh, network request to our login. And so that is our auth server URL. Um, you know, if you have this in production, it's going to be a lot nicer and neater than having to manage, you know, oh, which, you know, of my four ports are these, you know, four different applications running on. Um, but localhost colon 3000, that is now our auth server. And let's see. I'm not sure. If I have any accounts to find there yet, let me actually go ahead and uh, and do that. While Postman fires up, we'll go ahead and continue adding um, our data to our fetch request. So. No, oh, geez. Sorry for everybody. Uh, rest in peace to your retinas. Thanks, Postman. So, we'll uh, make a post request. We're setting our content type headers to say, hey, we've got some JSON data incoming to our server. And then the data will pass in. Uh, we'll go ahead and just stringify that email and password. See, I might not actually have created any user accounts yet. Okay, well, let's take a little segue so I can uh, So let me make a post request to register a new user. Right route, just wrong port. All right, and so for registering a new user, um, I'll actually have to look back at what our server requires. Uh, I actually forget. Let's see. I actually forget what our <laughs> registration route um, requires. So let's go take a look at that. Actually, thankfully, uh, <laughs> the last thing we looked at was my query to register a user. So that's really handy. It requires a base user object. Um, we use UUID to assign that. Uh, we salt and hash that. I need a username and an email. Okay. The benefit of the centralized auth portal too is you can actually make it register a user as well. Um, if you wanted to make some dynamic, you know, inputs pop up, let users toggle to whether or not they're registering or logging in, you know, we could do that as well, which I, I won't for this example, but uh, 
name Andrew. Username is going to be ATLC. Email test at test.com. And finally, password the ever classic Hunter2. So test at test.com, Hunter2. That's what we're going to test everything out with today. So we'll hit send. And we get successfully registered, and we got a token back. Yay! And there's my user's UUID, so cool. We now actually have a real legitimate account with which to uh, test our login. I actually don't know if I test the login function by itself either, so let me uh, just do that real quick, just to make sure that actually functions. All right, and uh, with how the server is coded, um, you know, each each user can either log in with an email or a username. We have that little regular expression uh, check in, you know, our local strategy middleware, which is pretty cool. So your server or your client side is gonna pass that along as rec.body.email, but it could actually be either your username or your email so and you know what we'll go ahead and test that out yep and I I remember we even spoke about my messages in the previous video the lovely messages I leave to myself YOLO very very useful um, in determining what your API returned right so we've uh, actually verified that it's working now which is great and uh, test at test.com and Hunter2 are what we can test everything out with. All right. And uh, I am very, very, very meticulous with how I return my data in my web servers. Um, so no matter what, I always return JSON data. And if I'm not doing a select statement, effectively speaking, um, I'm always going to return an object with a message property at the very least. So in the event I don't select data of some kind, I don't make a get request, um, I will have a message. And if there's an error of any kind, I also will have a you know message property that we can use to kind of, you know, verify everything with or at least get some good status and uh, know what happened. And I, I like being that consistent because it lets me just very easily chain, you know, my client side user alert handling. I let my server take care of establishing everything and just like daisy chain it to the client side. So it makes it really, really easy for me um, and the client side, but for that reason that I can always safely parse this and know that I have a data.message property. And the reason why I like to use async await with fetch is because when interacting with this data object, I still have scope of the res object in a clean fashion. So we can determine if the response was okay. If uh, we have a data.token, we can, you know, do a redirect, you know. And if some kind of error happens, we'll alert that. And yeah, so let's see. So if we have a bad response, this is gonna be some kind of authentication error, so we can alert that. And like I said, I, I don't have to do any sort of like checking of status codes or anything to do any deterministic kind of error handling. I just let my server take the brunt of it and uh, set up some good consistent structure. So that way client side, I just know, cool, at this point in time, I've got an object with a message property I can display to my user in the event something goes wrong. And if all is good, and if we get a token back, 
uh, we can redirect the user to where they came from. So at this point in time, what we have is originator. That uh, state here that says where we came from. And so what we can do is we can just overwrite the uh, window location and just force our user back to this page or to the you know other page that they came from. So Now we will do one thing on top of this. And we're not going to just say it's, you know, the originator. I guess I could have used like original URL for a better variable name. That's kind of like eh, but um, on top of this, we're going to send it back to our other sites with a query param appended back on it. And that's going to be the query param of token. And so um, if I have, let's see, I'm not going to do like site A and site B, but I will do a separate site here. Um, so this is our, you know, central portal effectively. We actually really don't have too much work to do for this beyond that. Um, let me go ahead and sling out a quick secondary site, which uh, Oops, let me cancel that. Cool, didn't actually create the directory yet. So I'll go ahead and make this um, a project. Like I said, I'm not gonna sh upload the repo for this. I just need it as kind of a quick and dirty example. Um, it's this that I'm, I'm going to be sharing and uploading that y'all can, you know, reference. Um, let's see. And yeah, like I said, if you wanted to, we could have like a little toggle switch here that says like currently logging in need to register and you can click on it to toggle some, you know, Boolean state. And that Boolean state could say, you know, okay, let's short circuit and add in like name and username um, as additional fields to fill out in the event a user is actually registering. We can usually use it to conditionally, you know, change the text of the button. And we can also use it to conditionally change the URL um, path itself. So instead of like making a fetch request to auth login, if we toggle that state to like false if it's like an is login piece of state we could have it go to slash auth slash register instead so we, we could have one little boolean um oh looks like i mistyped my string there oh did i accidentally put that on a new line Ugh. Gross. So I might just have a, a plain JavaScript to create a React app. Oh well, that's fine. So this one I'm gonna leave ugly and not really fancy. Um, And so this app is actually going to be running on uh, port 3002. So let me go ahead and get this started. And then we'll have a button here. Or actually, not a button. We'll have an anchor tag here. And it's going to be So it'll go to localhost colon 3000, AKA our central auth server with the originator um, query param of uh, 
localhost colon 3002. And uh, what we need to do here is we need to import our use effect and say upon landing on the page, we'll see if we have any query params available. And if we do, and if there's a token, we can stash that in local storage. So I'll load up localhost colon 3002 in a second. Oh, whoops, I never launched it. All right, we have cool app number one here. Uh, if we go inspect local storage for this, or actually, whoops, there we go. Local storage currently empty. Um, we'll go through that same URL parsing here. So we've got our use effect to find here. And I just realized I super full screened this and I didn't crop my uh, VS code. So apologies if any code was cut off, but uh, now everything should be fully visible. So, I mean, this is just a plain old create react app. Haven't done much except added my H1 here and uh, this use effect. We're gonna construct another URL object. We're gonna create a new uh, URL search params object. And previously, what am I doing? Uh, previously, we were looking for originator as a query param. We're not doing that here. Uh, what we're instead looking for is token. And so, <clears throat> um, we'll array destructure that from params.getAll token. And if it exists, we'll go ahead and stash that in local storage. And so yeah, if uh, if we can land on this page and we have query parameters uh, with token in there, that means we have something we can actually you know fetch and work with. So um, now we have this link here that says login, and it takes us to our central auth portal with the query parameter of itself. And so once we land on the central auth portal itself, I don't know how many VS Code instances I have open at the moment. Uh, let me close out of the server. We don't need that anymore. Um, so once we land on this, we have this use effect fire, getting the originator query param and setting that to state. And so once somebody successfully logs in, and we get a token back, we can redirect our user back to where they came from with that extra uh, addition. So I've got this saved, this code's up to date, got this saved, let's go test that out. So my ugly ass button over here, click login. It's gonna execute a get request on our server, let me, let's see. Hold on, got a port wrong somewhere. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was like, why, why am I making a server side request? It's because my server is now running on 3000 um, central auth border is 3001 and site A, site 1, site whatever is 3002. Okay, so address of the central auth portal. Pretty important when you're trying to, I don't know, do some centralized logging in. 
All right, so refreshed, I click login, it redirects us to this page here. And I'm closing out of the other tab just to make sure and show you all that there's no like distinction. I just clicked on a link, get taken to this page, test at test.com, and then Hunter2, login. I get redirected back here. We have my token here and my query params and my URL, meaning once I land upon this page, we then have let's see we've got my query parameter there this better not show up undefined I land on the page we create a new URL object create a new oh url.search dang it I knew I left something out there okay 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 now now we're gonna see some cool stuff okay so yep there it is logging on to find because I was missing a very critical object so I'll clear out local storage you know nothing in here I want to log in. We have no other tabs open, you know, related to this except for some GitHub links. Uh, I hit login now. We get redirected to Central Auth Portal. Uh, everything's insecure because I'm running everything on localhost, but you won't have that issue in production if. Uh, if you're using a provider that does all of that management for you and uh, I'm able to successfully log in and it forces us back to our original page that we came from with our token there and then there we have our credentials here and if we wanted to like server side I guess we could have some kind of like um, I don't know, like greeting route that verifies your token and spits your user info back. That way, you know, we could have some verification that that user was actually legitimately logged in, but we don't really need to. Uh, we can see it's a token that's actually stored and saved. And so um, now our user, um, ATLC, aka me, is authenticated through the central auth portal. So that's really all you need for all of your sites is a little login button that takes you here with your current sites uh, info as the originator query param and then every site that you use uh, this on you basically just need this exact same use effect just to extract out your query parameters from the URL and there's probably a better cleaner way of extracting this out um, you probably could just do like a regular expression to like parse it out yourself if you wanted, but um, this is really all you need for every single downstream project that you want to have on that centralized auth server. So it's really, really cool that we can do this just because it helps streamline our development. And like I was saying in the initial video, if you have, you know, a project that you really want to just make an API for yourself that's kind of a you know maybe a backbone for several different client side apps like a note taking app a to-do list app a, a grocery list app kind of thing then a structure like this would work out really really nicely because you set up your back end do all of the long arduous work initially and then after that you just add in some routes some queries and then a new client side and then your client side how do you get your users authenticated well it's all you know to the same auth server so you may as well just have a unified auth portal that uh handles that for you so i hope you guys enjoyed this little miniature series and uh if you want to see more videos like this in the future let me know in the comments let me know if there's some auth features you'd love for us to demonstrate and uh, make sure to subscribe so that when we do those, you do get notifications for them. But as always, I'll catch y'all later.